Hi all, today we are going to discuss about hot wire instruments. So this is based on the simple phenomena that whenever you pass the current through some hot wire or whenever you pass the current through some wire or resistance material, a temperature is produced due to the I square R losses. Because of the temperature that is produced, the metal will get expanded or the material will get expanded. We are going to use that expansion principle. That is when the current is passed through the material due to the heat that is produced due to I square R loss, that material will expand. We are going to use that principle. So let us take for example, I am taking the basic working principle now. Let us take for example between the point A and B, a resistance material which is called as a hot wire is connected here and from the center of this hot wire, let us take this point as some from point C, I have connected one phosphor branch wire which is connected through the pointer. It is connected through the pointer at this point and the pointer is pivoted at this junction. That means about this point because this is the fixed point, about this, this pointer can move. Whenever the wire is pulled this side, the pointer will easily move and this wire will be connected to a spring. So now what the spring will do, always try to pull this phosphor branch wire towards. That means it will try to pull this wire AB towards the spring in the perpendicular direction. Under normal condition, the length AB, let us assume is stiff. So now when the current I is passed through this wire, when the current I is passed through this wire, because of the current passing through this wire, there will be I square or loss. So because of this, the temperature of the material increases. So because when the temperature is increased, the wire will start expanding like this. Let us assume due to the current that is passing, the wire is expanded like this and getting a sag of S. So because of this sag, what happens? Because at this point, because the point C, this wire is pulling this one. So spring will move in this direction as the spring is moved in this direction because this phosphor branch wire is pulled away due to the spring. Because of this, the pointer will also move in this direction. So pointer will move to the new position like this pointer will move to the new position like this. This is the basic working principle for this one. But generally, practically, if you observe any type of wire, whenever it is heated, the amount of change in the length that comes, that means let us assume initially the length of this wire is equal to L. So now this is increased to L plus delta L. Generally, this change in the length is extremely small. That means the change in the deflection of the pointer will be very small. It is not significant. So it cannot be displayed properly on a big scale. So what we have to do, whatever the small displacement is coming, that should be magnified so that it can be easily absorbed on the scale. So practically, construction will not be this much simple. We are going to add some more components. So magnify the amount of length or to magnify the displacement of the pointer on the scale so that a big scale can be adopted. We can even measure the small change in the current also. So I am proceeding further. They can be used for measurement of the current up to 5 amperes and they can be even used as for the measurement of the voltage. Generally, they are practically used mainly for the current, very rarely used for the voltage. If you want to use for the voltage, they can use up to 400 volts, provided we connect some series resistance to limit the current. They can be used for both AC and DC because they are mainly depend on the heating principle. That means they are proportional to the current square. So as they are depending on the RMS value, they can be used for both AC as well as DC. So let us see the practical construction, how this is amplified. So practically construction will be like this. In order to magnify the expansion of a wire, a special arrangement is made like this. So this is the scale and the pointer. So this pointer, this will be connected to a pulley here. So how the remaining construction will be made, let us see. So here this point A to point B, between these two point, the hot wire is connected. This hot wire is made up of platinum iridium material. It is made up of platinum iridium material because this material is free from the problem of oxidation even at high temperatures. That means it can withstand the problem of the oxidation even at high temperatures. That's why practically we go for platinum iridium material and it is made, made up of as thin material as possible so that there will be uniform expansion will be there in the material when it is heated up so that the expansion will be uniform it will respond very fast so that's why the thickness is made 0.5 mm i think up to here it is clear to you now from the center point of this wire this point c is connected to a phosphor branch wire. This phosphor branch wire, you can see, let us assume that is having a length L1. This phosphor branch wire is connected between the point C and point D. Phosphor branch wire is connected between point C and point D. Remember here, all these extra setup, this phosphor branch or other things we are doing for magnifying the how much is the sag that we are getting? How much is the delta R we are getting 
to magnify that one we are going for the setup i am going to make the derivation there it will be clear to you so we can conclude that the point cd is the phosphorus branch wire so now coming to from the center of this phosphor branch wire that means at point e we connect one silk thread so how the silk thread will be connected this silk thread is connected from the point e it is connected through the pulley this pulley is connected directly to the pointer that means when this pulley is rotated the pointer will deflect so this will pass through the pulley like this and then it is connected through a spring s that means always the spring s will try to pull this it is always trying to pull this the silk thread that means always it will try to pull the silk thread that means always from the point e it always try to pull in this direction i think it is clear up to now and this one will try to pull downwards because whenever it is pulling here it will try to pull from here so then this up to this part i think it is clear to you so now coming with the remaining components the remaining components will be like this there will be one aluminum disc is used and along with the aluminum disc one damper bar also damper magnet is also used this aluminum disc is directly connected to this pulley so whenever the pulley or the pointer moves this aluminum disc also will move that will cut with the flux of the damping magnet so because of this that can produce the required damping torque i am just repeating the points we have seen so here ab is the hot wire made up of platinum iridium this is used to avoid the oxidation at high temperature cd is the phosphor branch wire and es is the silk thread which passes through the pulley so because it is connected through the pulley whenever there is a linear motion in this because it is tagged to the pulley that linear motion is converted to rotational motion so your pointer will move that is the basic purpose of connecting to the pulley so then s is the spring and l is the aluminum disc along with the combination with the damping magnet will provide the required damping torque so then p is the pointer so let us see how this will work so when the current is passed through the hot wire ab when the current is passed through this hot wire ab what will happen it will expand so this hot wire will expand like this it will expand like this so whenever the hot wire is expanded this point c is pulled downwards so when this is coming downwards because you can see this thread is connected to the spring this spring will try to pull this one when the spring is trying to pull this one that means this phosphor branch wire will be pulled towards your pulley because of this because the linear motion is converted to the rotational motion your pointer will deflect that means this rotational motion is converted to this linear motion is converted to rotational motion and it will start moving so we can tell that why this what is the reason for production of this one the reason for production of this one is expansion of the wire ab why it is expanding it is due to the rise in the temperature why the temperature is rise due to i square r loss or otherwise we can tell that whatever expansion came that is due to the i square current square or it is proportional to the rms value of the current that's why this can be used for both ac and dc so let us see how the magnification factor comes so that the principle will be clear to you so let us start with this point a and b between these two points hot wire is connected so whenever the current is passed through this wire what will happen it will start expanding like this let us assume it is expanded this dotted one this indicates the hot wire after expansion this is after expansion so let us assume it is expanded because of that some sag sc is coming that means initial length is l of this wire from the center of this hot wire this but this point c is connected to point d that means phosphor branch wire is connected now when this is expanded it will move downward like this that means the wire is expanded like this so the l is now changed to l plus delta l due to the current that is passing through it now we can calculate the sag that is produced is equal to this is the formula for sag is square root of l plus delta l divided by 2 because the total this length this expanded length will be l plus delta l we are keeping in the center so that's why it will be l plus delta l divided by 2 whole square minus initial value is l by 2 so it is l by 2 whole square it is getting it this vertical vertical distance this is l by 2 and this hypotenuse or this distance is l plus delta l by 2 so you have to take l plus delta l by 2 whole square minus l by 2 whole square that gives this value from the right angle triangle we can calculate the rough value we can calculate in this way so this i can simplify it when you simplify it will become 2l delta l plus delta l whole square divided by 4 which is approximately equal to l times of delta l divided by 2 here delta l square i am neglecting the reason is delta l square is far far less than 2 times of delta l when compared to the original length l the change in delta l is negligibly small that's why we can neglect this term with small minimum error so now i want to further expand this one that means along with the send 
I want to further magnify it. Let us see because of this small s, because of the sag, how much magnification is coming. How much magnification is coming? The magnification is due to the sag in the wire, that sag s, because we are getting the sag, because of the sag, this is pulled downwards. So that is a sag divided by, this sag is coming due to change in the length, that is delta L. So what is s? Yes, we have already defined above that S is equal to square root of L by delta L divided by 2 divided by delta L. So delta L when I bring inside, it will become delta L whole square. So this will become square root of L divided by 2 times of delta L. So this much the delta L is magnified. So initially the value is delta L. For a change of delta L, it is magnified to L divided by 2 delta L times of the original value of the delta L. So now the sag obtained in the phosphor bronze wire because of this phosphor bronze wire also we have seen in the original construction. Let us go back to the original construction. What is happening at point E? This is connected to the silk thread. So silk thread is always trying to pull this. That means this phosphor bronze wire when this is moving downwards, this wire is free because sag comes here in this wire. So that will be pulled by this silk thread. So that's why I am assuming that it is pulled like this because of this pulley that means the silk thread that is pulling this a sag S1 is coming in this one. So the length of this phosphor bronze wire is fixed because it is not expanding anything. So total length is L1. If I am taking in the center, it will be equal to L1 divided by 2. And when this is equal to L1 divided by 2, what is this vertical distance? What is this gap? Because this total initially from this point to point D, it is L1. But now it is decreased by L1 by, it is decreased by a distance of S. So total distance now will be equal to L1 minus S. This vertical distance is L1 minus S. Actual length of this phosphor bronze wire is L1. So we are taking in the center, we have to take it as L1 by 2. And this length if you are taking divided by 2 vertical distance, that will be L1 minus S divided by 2. I think it is clear to you. So now we can calculate the sag in this material. That means sag S1. So I am calculating the sag S1 here. That sag S1 will be square root of L1 by 2 whole square because this one hypotenuse square minus this adjacent value square that gives the height square minus L1 minus S divided by 2 whole square. I am just taking it like a equal to a triangle with minimum error. So again in this case, this I can simplify it. When you are simplifying it, it will come like this. Again, here I am neglecting the value of sag square because the value of the sag is far, far less than the value of the length of this phosphor bronze wire. So that's why S square is far, far less than two times of L1 into S. So we can neglect this one. So we will get the sag S1 is square root of L1 into S divided by 2. Whatever the sag is initially coming, it is further amplified. You can see square root of L1 by 2 into S times. That much it is done. Or otherwise, if you substitute the value of S from equation number 1, you will get it as L1 divided by 2 into square root of L into delta L divided by 2. So this I can write as square root of L1 by 2 into square root of L by 2 multiplied by this delta L I have taken outside. This is square root of square root. That means it will become fourth root of delta L or delta L whole to the power of 1 by 4. So we got here that the overall sag that is coming or which is responsible for the deflection of the pointer that sag is equal to delta L that means change in the length which come in the original wire which is proportional to the current square right. So this is delta L whole to the power of 1 by 4. So this is the reason is since delta L is proportional to current square. So when you are substituting this current square this will become current square whole to the power of 1 by 4. This will be square root of current. So it is square root of the RMS value. So overall magnification that is obtained using this entire thing will be M will be equal to delta L is actually converted to S. So this is S1 divided by delta L. When you calculate this S1 divided by delta L, you will get some factor multiplied by 1 by delta L whole to the power of 3 by 4. If you want total value of the change that comes, so you have to multiply this with S1 will be equal to this entire thing you have to multiply with delta L that you will get the total one. I think it is clear to you. So we can conclude that because of this entire arrangement, the whatever the small delta is coming that is magnified by so many times so that you can get a huge displacement in the pointer. We can easily measure the even the smallest change in the current also. That is the advantage of this. Let us try to summarize the advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is this can be used for both AC as well as DC because since the heating effect is proportional to current square, it is produced due to heating effect. And second one, it is free from the waveform errors as their deflection depends on the RMS value only. As their deflection depends on 
RMS value only. And third one, it is not affected by the stray magnetic fields because in the operation of this entire instrument, there is no concept of magnetic effect. If you are taking for the case of PMMC instrument, moving iron instrument, there is a magnetic field. But here there is no concept of the magnetic field. So that's why it is not affected by external or stray magnetic fields. Then the error due to temperature variations will be there. They can be easily avoided by making the base of the instrument with the same temperature coefficient of expansion of that of the hot wire. If the temperature coefficient of expansion of the base is same as the hot wire, then in that case, the errors will be minimum. Then it has fair accurate, fairly accuracy even for up to high frequencies, very high frequencies also we can use. But there are some disadvantages also. The disadvantage is because it is depending on the I square R loss or the heat that is produced, its power consumption is very high. That means it will apply the loading effect in the system. So this leads to loading effect this leads to loading effect on your instrument then the scale is non-uniform because it is depending on the rms value and the response of the circuit is slow there is because of two reasons as a wire takes some time to heat up this is for rising characteristic and similarly when you are cooling down or when you are decreasing the current again the wire will take some time to cool down then only it will come back to its original position that's why the deflection of the instrument is not same for ascending and descending value that means the response is lethargic that means the response is very slow when the current is changed you have to wait for some time then measure it that is the next disadvantage so because of the disadvantage of high power consumption and slow response that's why nowadays these instruments are not used in practice but anyway because the basic concepts are required for you that's why i have explained you the things i hope that the concept of hot wire instrument why the construction is very complex or multiple things are connected are completely clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much